ladies and gentlemen, friends and families, I'm deeply honored to have been invited to participate in this crucial event focused on countering impunity in Iran. As highlighted by many international reports, the issue of impunity in Iran persists year after year with security forces acting without accountability, repressing basic freedoms and committing widespread abuses. One of the most tragic chapters in Iran's recent history is the series of extrajudicial executions that occurred in 1988, resulting in death of thousands of political prisoners in a matter of weeks. These victims were clandestinely buried in mass graves. Prominent international experts argue that these horrific crimes amount to both crimes against humanity and genocide. The Iranian government has faced extensive international scrutiny and condemnation for its role in these events. Unfortunately, despite the international community's attention, the perpetrators of these crimes, including Iran's current President Ebrahim Raisi and Judiciary Chief Golam Hossein Mohseni Ejei, continue to enjoy impunity. This culture of impunity has led to a brutal crackdown on the Women, Life, Freedom protest movement over the past year, resulting in the alleged death of more than 700 protesters on the streets and numerous executions in prisons. It is vital to emphasize that the protest movement has consistently called for accountability and justice. Their demands include the overthrow of Iran's clerical regime and the pursuit of greater social and political freedoms. These nationwide protests represent the most significant challenge to the Islamic Republic in decades and are likely to resurface in the future. To break the cycle of impunity, it is imperative that the UN Human Rights Council renew the mandate of the fact-finding mission to investigate the regime crackdown on the current protests. UN Special Rapporteur on Iran, Professor Javid Rahman, and other UN Special Procedures have called for an international investigation into 1988 massacre and publicly demanded accountability. Iran has dismissed these allegations as biased, urging the Council to refrain from politicization and stereotyping. It is also of utmost urgency that we renew our call for accountability regarding the 88 massacre and advocate for the establishment of the UN Commission of Inquiry to investigate these crimes comprehensively. This inquiry should serve as a starting point for investigating all subsequent atrocities. We find ourselves in a world marked by profound turmoil, growing political divisions and power politics. These challenges have cast a shadow over the protection and advancement of the human rights agenda, multilateralism, global solidarity and cooperation. Anxiety about the future prevails. In cases where states are unwilling to take action, it falls upon the UN and international civil society organizations to redouble their efforts to address impunity. Civil society organizations have played and continue to play an important role in raising awareness of human rights violations. Let me just mention the Aban Tribunal 2020, the International People's Tribunal on Iran's Atrocities. However, without the UN and other international institutions and their legitimacy, it is difficult to predict the prevention of the spiral of political violence in Iran. The biggest challenge at this moment is the further development of international criminal law and access to justice and accountability for human rights abuses are, as we all know, fundamental pillars for achieving justice, peace and dignified lives for all. I have personally been involved in the, with the UN Commission of Inquiry on North Korea, which produced a report aimed at catalyzing a new strategy for North Korea. Regrettably, a decade after the report's release, the international community, including the UN and other international organizations, has not yet coordinated a responsible action plan for unconditional talks with the North Korea. While the Commission had limited remedies, uh, remedies at its disposal, it did raise global awareness 
about the humanitarian crisis in North Korea and documented wide-ranging and ongoing crimes against humanity, calling for urgent action by the international community, including referral to International Crim Criminal Court. Iran's attempts to discredit the current UN Special Rapporteur on Iran mirror North Korea's response to the uh, Commission's report on, uh, that has produced in 2013. As a human rights defender, I add my voice to those who believe that despite the challenges, we must persist. We cannot abandon the millions of people who rely on the goodwill, compassion, and support of the global human rights community. Regardless of current setbacks, we must consistently and persistently address human rights violations in Iran and wherever they occur. I come from Serbia, a country that was that, that once faced paria status and sanctions due to its involvement in wars in Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and NATO intervention in Kosovo. While mechanisms like the ICTY, the Hague uh, Court, and national war crimes courts were established, war criminals continue to be ignored. Dealing with the past is a lengthy, transgenerational process that hinges on the nature of subsequent changes. We must recognize that the past legacies exert a significant influence on society. As a great writer once said, the past is never dead. It is not even the past. Understanding historical facts and their political and social context is key to understanding both past and present challenges. I remain hopeful that reason, wisdom, political courage, determination, and the moral responsibility for the common good, peace and security will ultimately prevail. The people of Iran deserve to be part of a global community that upholds the principles of the UN Charter, ensuring a life free from want and fear. Thank you.